to Game Crunch, your weekly video game podcast. My name is Mike Anastasia, and with me today we have Nick. Yep. And Brandon. Yo. And we're here to talk about games and things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Lots of gamings in the Tingans. Did we all watch Mortal Kombat? Yeah, I figured we probably <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually it's one, one of the big reasons why I decided to watch it last night, because I'm like, I bet everyone else watched it. So I, yeah, I watched it on Monday. <laughs> I watched it Friday. <laughs> no, Saturday, sorry. So, you know, we might as well start there. It's super topical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, quick note. When we originally recorded this, it got into a little bit of spoiler talk. Don't worry, I edited it out. There's only minor spoilers in here now, mostly about, like, Easter eggs. So, nothing I think that would affect your viewing of the movie. However, if you want to listen to the full, unedited version of what we talked about for Mortal Kombat, it's at the end of the episode. So you can listen to this part and then you can listen to the spoiler talk more or less at the end. There we talk about things like endings and different characters and things like that. This one is just kind of mostly our thoughts on the movie, the Easter eggs, and the casting. That's pretty much where we kind of take it. So just wanted to let you know, you should be free to listen if you are trying to avoid spoilers. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. It was a movie about Mortal Kombat. What there do you, you guys go. think of this movie, honestly? Um, it was okay. It was good. I thought it was I good. thought it was pretty good. I thought it was a very good baseline of where to start. And I know they're working on four more of these motherfuckers. Oh, mm-hmm. are they? <laughs> yeah. So like I really think it's a good starting point. I didn't like find anything inherently wrong with it. I I quite often really enjoyed the way it was made. Yeah, you, like inherently wrong in like what way? So, um, like as far as a video game movie or a movie based off of a video game, mm-hmm. I didn't see really any faults with this as when it comes to the actual uh, source material and the way it handled it. It seemed like the person that whoever made this movie actually cared about the source material in a way and wanted to in at least some way do it justice and i i dig that i thought they did a good job with that all right let's just go ahead and get this out of the way kano was the best character in the entire fucking movie yeah no he was easily easily he was fantastic yeah they did the whole movie they did my boy reptile bad i mean when it comes to mortal kombat as a series because i actually really like the mortal kombat fighting series i think it's probably one of the better stories in a fighting game uh, period and the actual characters are really entertaining just in general and um when it comes to mortal Kombat, they have so many different dimensions and universes and so many people come back from the dead that literally anyone from this movie that died if they're going to follow how mortal Kombat normally is will probably be back in the next film <laughs> i like some of the easter eggs there are some neat easter eggs in this didn't any of you guys catch it uh the only ones that I caught were the ones that were cheesy. Like which ones? Like when uh, Cabal got fucking wrecked and he's like, uh, fatality. Oh, no, 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 no. There were actual Easter eggs in the movie. Okay, those were just was little, stupid. No, those were just little callbacks and it was just like, okay, it's cheesy. It's silly. I, the I, only I, one I that actually kind of like those. Just the only one that honest. fit, in my opinion, was the one uh-huh. where, where Kano said Kano wins. I was like, okay, that's... That I, liked, it. I liked all of them because I thought they were cheesy and stupid, and I thought yeah. that was what the entire movie was, and as such, I thought it was a good movie for what it was. And it feel, yeah. felt like the movie wasn't trying to be anything more than a cheesy action flick based off a video game that actually, you know, cared about the source material. And, and I dug it for that specific reason. I thought it was a really good movie. Not like a masterpiece or anything but like yeah i'd probably watch that again if someone wanted to watch it it was fun um but no what i was trying to talk about with um uh easter eggs was like when the jacks fight at the beginning with sub-zero was happening Mm -hmm. uh some of the graffiti in the background was actually button combos to do oh, okay. moves in mortal Kombat. Yeah, it was actually awesome and i was like that's fucking cool <laughs> And the only other thing that I saw that was kind of close to, but it was more of a herd 
thing was they definitely they pulled on the like old Mortal Kombat like movie theme quite a few times at different points in the movie. I noticed like near the end, they would like hit up some of those notes from it, and I was like, mm-hmm. I know that. Yeah, um, I mean that's just because that's the Mortal Kombat story. Like it's that goes back to them actually giving a damn about the source material, in my opinion. So, but that's yeah. the movie, like the original movie. I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah, but the like, original movie at least got some things right, and then a lot of things wrong. Yes. <laughs> the first movie I thought was fun, though, too. Oh, no, 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 no. Those movies are are classics, in my opinion. They're, they're, they're dumb, and they're really silly, but I love them for that reason. I don't find... I don't think they're bad movies at all. I just think they're a product of their time. Yeah. Yeah, no. All in all, I really liked it. Um, I'm I'm excited for sequels. Same. I'm actually very excited for them. So it's good. Yeah, that's a fun movie. I liked it. Yeah, me too. It was fun. I don't remember if there's anything else I had to say about it. I know some people got some laughs about the whole leg sweeping thing too. Oh yeah, yeah, that was funny. Mm-hmm. It's just like a cheese move, and like they straight up made it into like a <laughs> cheese move in the movie. <laughs> yeah, that was great actually. Um, me and my friend were watching it uh, over like. We, we were syncing it together and watching it like discord call and whatnot. And um, <laughs> when we were watching it, he's like, dude, I had a friend who used to only do that to me anytime we played mortal Kombat, And then I would just <laughs> kick his ass when it got too annoying. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I had fun. It was good. It's definitely worth the watch in my opinion. If, especially if you like the mortal Kombat franchise. it has been around forever. At this point. I yeah, did. Even with it being around forever, some people are just like, mm, Mortal Kombat. Mm, I don't I, know. I, I wanted to bring something up. I did have somebody uh, in my at mentions on Twitter say, like, basically they were calling the movie murder porn. And I was confused because I was like, have you played, like, the recent games where, like, if you punch somebody in the balls, it zooms in and you can see everything just kind of exploding? And, yeah. Like... I don't know. I know when Mortal Kombat originally came out, that was like one of the original games that was like, we need a rating system because this is violent. Um, the Mortal Kombat I, movie wasn't even that violent. It, wasn't, it no. really wasn't. Well, that was my problem. I was like, if you play Mortal Kombat like 9, 10, 11, I'm like, it's not that. And so I asked him, I was like, well, have you played those games? He's like, oh, no, I just watched the uh, the cinematics because I like the lore of the game. I'm like, all if right, well, you can shut up now. If you watch the cinematics, then you probably know how violent it can get also. This just sounds like someone being an asshole just to be an asshole. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's definitely like, you can't be that dumb, but you might be that dumb. I mean, I haven't played Mortal Kombat in a long time, but even I know it's like... The more recent ones boring. are really good. Like, yeah. Legitimately, really good. And I don't, I don't even know, this wasn't even that bad compared to... Like this, the the gore that was in this was kind of like B movie gore, where like blood like sprays out like a sprinkler. Oh, yeah, yeah, but like even though they did that, like it didn't look bad. Like I thought the CGI and like I think there was some practical effects in this. I thought the effects work actually looked really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean there definitely had to be some practical stuff there. Uh, but no, I mean I thought I thought it was fun. I mean it was definitely very Mortal Kombat ish. Like what I would have expected. So here's something that made me laugh too. I don't remember what it was. I made some. Jo- I was talking over the movie when I was watching it last night. There was a point okay, where I was the- too. <laughs> there was a point where I was like, I don't remember who it was, and I expected him to just be like, do like a friendship move instead. I don't remember. Oh, that'd be funny as hell. Yeah, I think it was Kano. I don't remember, but it was funny. When before, yeah, it was, uh, I think that actually sounds right. Either that or uh, uh, Kung Lao, mm-hmm. and uh, oh my god, why are names so hard to remember when it comes to Mortal Kombat? I always remember their moves and even their move sets, but never their Liu names. Kang, Liu Kang, and Kung Lao. Yeah. That's the Kung, Kung Lao. Lao. Yeah, those two. Like I could not remember Kung Lao's name to save my life when the movie. Kung Lao's one of my favorite characters in Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat. Uh, him and his boomerang hat. <laughs> I was about to say, I'd play him for the hat. I liked all the hat jokes that they made at his expense. I loved it. It's like, some of us, we get, they get shitty powers, like boomerang hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything else you guys want to say about Mortal Kombat? No, I'm good. 
I guess the last thing I would say is I actually like the cast. Like, the people that played each one of the characters, I thought they fit the character pretty well, and they at least played it correctly, in my opinion. Uh, that's really all. I, I like the yeah, cast. I think they did a good job with the casting. Because that was one of the jokes I made with my friend. I was like, well, uh, we can t- clearly tell that this these people didn't go to the Borderlands school of casting your, your <laughs> characters. Because, like, we were watching it, and I was like, I haven't heard of any of these people. No. Ever. But they're actually playing their character correctly, and they look like their character, and they act like their character. So, awesome. And I was like, if only Borderlands could have done this. No, they're they're spending money on big name people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's dumb. Actually, uh, interesting enough, um, Nick, um, have you seen I... Ichi the Killer? I don't remember. I think no. I okay, so I really like that movie. And um, one of the people in Mortal Kombat was actually from Ichi the Killer. Um, and then also, uh, some of the people in Mortal Kombat were from the raid in the raid two. So right. they actually do have some pretty big name people, but they didn't like draw any attention to it, which is very surprising because mm-hmm. that, you know, normally you'd have movies be like, from the person that was in blah, blah, blah is playing this person and blah 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 or as blah and it's like they would always do that shit when they want to get people's attention and they would take a popular movie because like the raid and the raid 2 did fucking gangbusters when uh they first originally released so like they could have easily capitalized off that for your action fans Mm -hmm. audience but they didn't even try that and i didn't even realize it was them until yeah until like after the movie when i was like some of these people are familiar but like they didn't sell this, like, ah, this familiar face you know from another thing. So we, like, looked at the IMDb, and I was like, huh, some of these people I have actually seen before, and they're really good. Mm-hmm. But they didn't capitalize on these people being in this movie. They just let the movie speak for itself. And I, I dug that as well, as, like, an actual choice. Because it made everything feel very... Not Hollywood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, the borderlands film for instance where they're just grabbing all the big names and being like i don't give a shit if it makes sense this person's this it's like oh okay <laughs> all right then sub-zero guy was in a fast and furious movie yep he was that was about the only notable thing that i remembered a lot of them were from foreign films so yeah like, um like I said, Ichi the Killer is a very popular foreign film, and as are The Raid and The Raid 2. And if you've never seen any of those three movies, I would recommend watching The Raid and The Raid 2. And if you have a strong stomach, I would recommend watching Ichi the Killer. <laughs> and if you don't I have a strong Ichi stomach, I would... You have? I think so. Like, the one where, like... Well, this is one of the scenes where, like, anyone that tells me I've seen Ichi the Killer, I tell them the scene, and they're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. So they had this man being tortured in this room, and they had his skin on, like, hooks. And it was being pulled from every angle, and then they would walk up behind him and pour boiling water on his back to try to make him talk. Does this sound familiar to you? Like... Sounds familiar. I don't remember okay. that. Yeah. I'm, I'm 99% sure I've seen that movie. It's a really good movie. Like, it's legitimately good. Um, it's really fucked up, though. So, yeah. Watch Ichi the Killer, if you can. <laughs> There's a, a 4K Blu-ray came out of it um, last year. I watched it again. It was a 4K Director's Cut Blu-ray. I watched it last year again. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I like, you can even watch it in 4K if you want. I guess what I'm getting at is there's a lot of really good movies. Go watch movies instead. We barely play games anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's games and things. Anyway, moving on. Anyway, um, who is him? What? Oh, uh, the guy who played Kung. No, Kung not Lao? Kung Lao. Liu Kang. Liu Kang. Yeah. Okay. Well, when I watched the movie, I was like, I'm surprised that they didn't have the hot guy from the Power Rangers movie in there, and that was him. I didn't even recognize him. <laughs> oh, that is that hot guy. Yeah, and he was in that Black Mirror episode too. It was very good. You just had the same like epiphany that I did after seeing the movie. You're like, wait a minute, that's that's that guy. But mm-hmm. like, yeah, you didn't notice it during the film because they actually played their character really well. They were playing a character, not just big name Hollywood person is playing a character. Please believe this person's like, this character. No, it was 
this person's this character. Also, if you go and check afterwards on their IMDb page, here's several movies you've seen them in that you didn't even remember, and you're like, what the fuck? Uh, I had that that mental thought that, you know, I was like, I'm surprised they didn't have them there. But they didn't have them, like, super over-sexualized like they do in the other movies either. So, because usually, like, I'm pretty sure even in Power Rangers, he's, like, not wearing a shirt half the time. And he definitely wasn't a black guy. So... And he had long hair, he's wearing clothes, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, he had long hair and he's wearing clothes. That's how <laughs> we didn't notice who he was. Exactly. exactly. You don't know how much of a difference that makes for him. <laughs> uh, um, anyways, I tried out the Metopia demo. How I've been seeing a lot of uh, people customizing shit. How was it? I thought it was pretty good, actually. I, I think it convinced me to buy the game. Okay. There I am on it. It's not so Metopia. For those that don't know, it's like an RPG cross with like Tamadachi life. Probably the best way to put it. So you go in. You can either just use like generic me's if you want to have a very boring experience, or you can like put in like me's of whoever, and then it's got a story and you know whatever. So you go in and you start the game, and basically the me's faces are stolen. And tells you to pick that. You showed you this list of characters in this town. And it tells you to give them me's. So. I took a bunch of me's for my Switch, which was a pain in the ass. I'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, and, or sorry, a bunch of 3DS me's that I had and moved them to my Switch. That part was the pain in the ass. But then I put them on the characters, started playing the game, and then, you know, their faces are stolen. You got to go save them, whatever, whatever. And then you can, your me gets to be a player character and you get to give it a class and, and you get to go around and like fight slimes or whatever the fuck there is with these me faces. So I don't know. The story is kind of just weird and quirky and whatever. The thing I didn't realize though, well, like, so I started it and I put all like these me's that I had, I like my friends and stuff into the the first like characters you meet, and then I just realized that they were just like trash characters, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh no, that's not what I wanted. So I tried to restart and I couldn't figure out how to do it. And then I realized you can just completely recast all the me's. And I was like, oh, it's just, it's hidden. Like, you could just go into, like, you could go into, like, records and then journal, and then it just lets you, like, look at the Mies that are in the town, and you can just switch them around. And that's what I realized. You could actually go through, and you can pull up, like, popular Mies. Like, okay. the Mies, I guess, that were used in the 3DS game, and you could do that. So then I went through and, like, recast my town. So now, like, Obama's my mayor, and... <laughs> <laughs> go on. Obama's my mayor for the castle because they let you start doing the castle people. I saw that there was a Burger King me. So I decided that he's going to be the king when I get the king. And so, as one would. As one would. Yeah, yeah so, that makes sense. So then I was like, well, who am I going to make his castle guards? Well, I found a Ronald McDonald me. <laughs> I found a Colonel Sanders me. All right, all right, and all right. And two more. And I'm like, well, they got to be food related now. So mm-hmm. now I did the Pringles man. He's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fucking so, roll. <laughs> exactly. I was like, I love it. So so that's that's my King's Guard. And then yeah, so now it's a, a quest for now now I made it so that the actual like party characters are like people that I know. Those are my friends. So now it's like me and my friends against um this one guy that we used to work with that was really smelly and nasty. So Dark Lord DK, as we call him. So, <laughs> so that's what we're doing. We're venturing across the lands to fight off, we're to save the people and, and fight Dark Lord DK. So, wow, mm-hmm. that yeah, is uh, a lot to take in. Give me a sec. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Oh, I had the swap note girl. She's like a mom in this game, and she's oh, mom. Uh, what's her she's name? She's a mom of Shaggy. Uh, Nikki. Ah, yeah, Nikki. Yep. So Nikki, and then she's Shaggy's mom. Okay. Like Scooby Doo Shaggy. Yep, Scooby Doo Shaggy. Okay. 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 Yep. And then right. I had uh, Jack Black. He's living in my oh, town. Of course, of course. Yeah. And then oh, Brandon, you're in there too. I, I am. Me. Why am I there? <laughs> <laughs> I cast you as the sarcastic man. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> On brand. <laughs> On brand, <laughs> definitely. So yeah, so that, that's that's what's going on so far. It's really fun. Oh, and I found a horse, and yeah, so I got the horse, and you could like, and that you have this like hotel that you go to. Well, it's an inn, I guess. There's an inn that you go to after each chapter, 
And it's like, do you want to, when you go in the end, you can pick where you want people to sleep and they can sleep in the same room together. I don't know, gradually fall in I love. I need you to do me gradually a huge fall. favor. Mm-hmm. Let me know if I hang out with Jack Black or or uh, I guess fall in love with him as well. <laughs> <laughs> because, my God, Jack Black is the absolute best. I love that man. <laughs> I will let you know. Um but yeah, it's just it's funny and quirky. I don't know. Uh, it's a good, like I said, it's got the weird. It's Metopia. It's like I said, it's an RPG, but like it's got the weird kind of quirky shit from Tamadachi in there too. Okay, where you'll just be like, you'll go and see what the people are doing, and they'll just be like cleaning a floor, and then like having a fight, and then there'll be extra friends, and then they'll decide that they like learned a new RPG move together. Be like, oh, thanks. We're gonna clean the floor super hard. Oh, I just learned a new move. It's called praise and i will praise you during a battle or whatever i don't know it's just it's very random very and silly from the sounds of it honestly, you remember how tamadachi was like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah literally yeah. like tamadachi life except an rpg mm. so the rpg stuff is kind of like basic though because you pick a level you pick a stage and you go into it and just kind of like you walk along and then you get into a battle and then you fight the stuff and then you walk along and then you get into another battle and then maybe you find a treasure chest and then that's it and it's like okay whatever and you get experience points as you go through and you level up and then sometimes there's branching paths to go on like if this is not a deep rpg at all so, but it's quirky it's fun i'm enjoying it so i think it like just pushed me just enough over the edge to just... i mean it sounds like it's a lot of fun i mean i got other stuff that i'm looking forward to playing so like yeah that one's not going to be picked up by me but in the future, probably. That does sound like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's kind of like... I mean, I, I'm kind of more like... I don't mm-hmm. think this game's going like, to knock my socks off. I'm mm-hmm. not expecting it to like... I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've already bought Returnal, which I'm getting tonight. And then I also mm-hmm. have um, uh, Pokemon Snap. <laughs> uh, two sequel? What's the fucking title of it? I don't even yeah, know. I think it's just new Snap. Pokemon Snap. Okay, well, I'm getting that tomorrow. So it's like, okay. I've got... Yeah. I, mean, I kind of got my stuff already planned out for me. I, mean, I guess mine's preloaded, mm. so I can play it tonight at midnight once it opens up. But yeah, well, I mean, there's that. That's coming out, and then well, we got the Famicom Detective Club that's in like two mm-hmm. weeks. Yeah, that looks I like think. a lot of fun. So I'm getting that. Like, I mean, it's not like Metopia is super high up on my list, but it's just kind of one of those like, eh, if I got time, I'll play it. Kind of thing. I feel so. you. Yeah, same. And the demo is a pretty decent size too. Like, I think it took me a couple hours, like two or three hours. Okay. Get through like it had a lot a demo ago, more that, that in there like to do the next. Has time. a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I should, you should try it out. You might really enjoy it, and that might just be what you need to get your fix off the game. I mean, when I finished it, I was like, "Oh man, I wish Nintendo wasn't such assholes and released a demo a month before the fucking game came out, so I could like just start it right now." And then I was like, "Well, I could start it right now if I really wanted to and just download it on my 3DS," but I was like, "No, I'm not doing that. Not doing it. Pain in my ass." So. Yeah, so I'll probably pick it up at some point next month, depending on how busy I am. So, there's that. So, let me tell you about getting Mies from your 3DS to your Switch, because it's okay. the dumbest thing ever. I do not know why they did not make a better way to do this yet. You think there would be a way? You think the Switch and 3DS could just talk to themselves and just be like, hey, here's my Mies. You know, just take them over. Which ones do you want? Pick and choose. No, it's not. The only way to get Mies. From your 3DS to your Switch is loading them one by one onto an amiibo on the 3DS and then scanning it into the the Switch and then rinse and repeat. That's it. Anyway. That sounds really fucking dumb. That's super dumb. Super dumb. I don't yeah, understand no. it. Like, I mean, you could just, you could have made like, I don't know, a transfer app or something. You could have made that some weird integration with your cell phone to transfer it over since apparently that can talk to your switch now but no you just got to load it one by one onto the the amiibo so you got to scan the amiibo on 3ds reassociate it with a me then scan it in the switch you got to be like yes i want this me from this amiibo and then you just keep on doing it over and over and over again it's dumb super dumb i didn't even try to get ones off my wii u i don't know which ones i had on there um But I had all the ones that I wanted on my 3DS, so I didn't look that far into it. But yeah, no, that was annoying. Uh, but they did show off there's a bunch of amiibo functionality in this game too, which was kind of cool because you can get like uh, Nintendo costumes 
for your characters by scanning an Amiibos. Mm-hmm. And they had a bunch. It was like Mario, Link, Samus, Toad, Please. Kirby, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what are the squids called in Splatoon? Octolings. What? <laughs> it said Octolings, and no, at Squid Kids. Squid Kids, yeah. Yeah, because I, I almost said Octolings, too, and I'm like, no, yeah. that's... I mean, there are Octolings, but it's not the Octoling. Uh, it's the squids. The Octolings are the octopi. Octopuses? Octopussies. Mm. I'm not sure. Ooh, I don't know about that last one. You might have to workshop that last one. <laughs> that's a James Bond movie. It is okay. actually a James Bond movie. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah one. There's multiple now. There's multiple. You said, you said octopuses. octopuses. Oh, yes. Probably they probably made a sequel to it, right? Maybe. I don't know if they would call it octopus. They just say octopus. <laughs> just like alien and aliens, octopus yeah. and octopuses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's fair. Yeah, but I would say just try out the demo. It's fun. It's working. Okay. If you like it, then you like it. If you don't like it, then you still got two to three hours of gameplay out of it. And there you go. And you can play around with like the neat stuff that they do over there, which is fun. So that part is fun. And I don't know if there's anything else that I had to say about it. I think that's it. That's all I got. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't know. Who wants to go next? Uh, uh, I can go. All right. Sure. Currently playing Metopia. No. Um, <laughs> I, I have another movie to talk about. Uh, I saw I the I saw the Demon Slayer uh, anime movie, Mugen Train. Uh, very mm-hmm. good. It's currently, first of all, it's currently the number one movie in America right now in terms of box office, which is pretty yep. wild. Uh, not to say that there's really nothing for it to really go against, um, but uh, I, I actually did go to the movie theaters to watch this because I am I am double vaxxed up, and I was like, fuck it, ain't no corona getting in me. So I just went there, wore a mask, and uh, watched the movie. It was really good. Uh, my only issue with it is that the character who they made it seem like it was going to be about mm. really wasn't like a huge fo- it wasn't like a huge problem this character like it wasn't like a huge focus of the movie and it was more the dynamic between uh the trio the main trio of characters inosuke uh fucking i can't remember the other two people's names already tanjiro and orange hair yellow haired boy okay. remember his na- actual name is i always forget his uh too um, so like it was a lot of character development for them. Um, and then there was another character from the, the original show that was, uh, thrown into this as well. And they did a lot of cool shit with him. Uh, the, the flame Hashira, uh, if you finish the show, you know who I'm talking about when I say the Hashiras. Uh, he's really fucking sweet and he does some cool shit in this movie. Uh, but no, it was really good. Um, it picks up directly where the anime leaves off. So like when you're finishing the show... They get on the Mugen train. When the anime starts, it's them getting on the Mugen train, so it's very seamless. Um, and overall, I really like the series a lot. I finished the, the anime a few weeks ago. Uh, I finished it specifically to watch this movie. So, but no, really good. I liked it. I think you'll enjoy it, Brandon, because I know you're, you're, you're going to be watching it very soon. Yes, very true. Yes, yeah. I will in the near future. Yes. Um, so I think you'll like it. But I look forward to watching it. Yeah. I, I heard it's pretty damn good. Yeah. Other than that, uh, I didn't do much else this week, uh, game wise. I, I mean, like, I'm still playing like Apex every now and again. Um, I actually hopped on Overwatch for the first time in like a year. Dude, me too. Actually, yeah. let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't played Overwatch since before Echo came out. Mm-hmm. So there's been a few characters that have come out since then, and like some changes have been implemented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. But, you know, I hopped on it because uh, I was playing with somebody who they were like, hey, do you care if we play Overwatch? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, I'll hop on with you. And it was fun. I'm definitely in the mood to to play it more right now. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it when I played it, too. Yeah. Um, it's the, the, the story things that we talked about before that you can go back and do right now because of some event going on. Those were actually a lot of fun. Oh, the archives event, yeah. Yeah, 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 those are fun. Yeah, then I've also been in the mood just to play it because... Uh, the Overwatch League started up again, and the team I follow is currently the only undefeated team in their division. So I'm like, let's go. Uh, so I'm happy about that. But uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't really do much, do much new, new stuff this week. Um, so yeah, 
Mm. I, I got Toby finally for my Animal Crossing Island. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot you were Toby. working on that. Toby. Good old Toby with his bowl cut. So he is he is now in my island after that yeah. all that painstaking bullshit that you got to do to get new villagers. I did see, speaking of Animal Crossing, they just released a new update for it. Mm-hmm. But it's weird. It's like a refresh for all the holidays that they did last year. Uh, yeah, there's like, like a new uh, Mayday thing. It's like the yeah. same thing, but it's like new. A new Mayday thing, a new mm-hmm. like museum day or week or whatever thing. Whereas just like you go through and collect the stamps, but they added like uh, one for the art area. And there's one more holiday too. And I was just like, oh, oh, the wedding season? Yes, that's what it is. They really didn't say what they added, but I could just tell from the pictures they're like, well, this definitely is different from what it was. I'm like, I can see there's yeah. new stuff here, but I mean, that was just not super, you know, engaging as it was. Well, I don't know. My aunt plays the game. It was like her favorite thing. She went through. And she's like, I don't want any of this shit that they're giving me. But she's like, I go and make the pictures every day. I was like, okay. Anyway, so. mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Um, anyways, that's all you got, Nick? Yeah, that's all I got. What about you, Brandon? What else you got? Um, I don't know what I wrote down. Hold on. <laughs> here. Looks like you oh, played oh, here. I, oh, yeah, I did play. I played Nier. So um, last, last year, last, time, last week I talked about Nier replicant but i fucked up i was actually talking about near gestalt that's what it was called for the american version uh this is actually near replicant uh to be more specific this game it, it, i'm so sorry forgive me for what i'm about to do him <laughs> uh, do you know what i'm about to do already no uh, i don't know but you did the cough so i'm just like uh oh yeah okay. buckle yeah. up to be more specifically this game is called <sighs> Oh, is this like the super decimal point thing? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is actually near replicant version 1.22474487139 ellipses. Um, that's that's what this game's called. Um, and this is the expansion to I mean, not expansion. It's it expands upon the original game. It also recreates the Japanese game, re-releasing it in English for the first time where you play as the brother instead of the father, like I was playing last week. Uh, and the brother storyline is largely the same thing. Um, a lot of the dialogues changed, and it makes more sense, and it flows better and more natural with this dialogue, in my opinion. However, it doesn't change some of the issues I was already having with the game last week. A very vast majority of the opening of this game just feels like I'm playing an MMO fetch quest and it kind of sucks. And it gets even worse when you take into account things like item drops to create weapon upgrades and whatnot. You can be in one starting area for hours. I spent three hours chasing lizards just so I could chop Mm -hmm. off her tails and make a drink for someone so that she would get so drunk she would actually sing with someone, and I would be able to finish a quest. That's the kind of weird shit you do in this game. And I get it. I get it. I get what fucking Yoko Toro was doing when he originally made this game. He was trying to make an RPG that lures you in with a small sense of security, where you feel like it's any other generic RPG, and then bam, he hits you with the Yoko Toro fucking crazy-ass bullshit. I get that. But it goes on far too long as an opener in this one. Um, it's not a bad game and it is a good game and uh one of the things that they actually did well in this remaster remake expansion is they took the battle system from near automata and they put that on top of it instead of the original battle system and it flows so much better for it however the timings are still like the same as like the original so it's really weird to get like the blocking timings and everything down specifically for things like um um the what's the word i'm looking for like when they release like bullet hell spreads uh just flying everywhere and that sort of thing slashing your sword is how you would block those bullets more so in this game and when i do that sometimes i just don't get it down right on time and i still get hit by them it's not a big deal the game in general is not super difficult 
but I do take more hits than I need to because of that. And, and I think that's something that they could have worked on a little bit, but it's totally fine. It's still overall, like when it comes to the combat, it's a really good game. Uh, the world's very interesting and it found a way to make me really sad very, very quickly. And I'm going to share this quest with you because I wasn't expecting it. This isn't story related, really. This is a side quest that took me off guard. So, Nick, you can stay. You don't have to run away, okay? Okay, cool. All right. So, I did a side quest where I talked to this old man, and he was in the main town, and he told me, hey, um, my dog went missing a little while ago. Um, I think they got out in the wilderness. Do you think you could go track them down and everything? And so, I went to go track down his dog. Uh, needless to say, the wilderness is full of deadly creatures, so his dog was dead. So that was sad. So my character picks up his dog and is saying that he's going to go take the dog back to him and, like, bury its body, you know, and help out the old man, you know, with his grief and that sort of thing that he'll inevitably have because of the passing of his dog. But uh, you notice something before you do this. Uh, the dog has a leaf in its mouth, so you take the leaf first. And you uh, you kind of decide not to burden the old man, and you you leave the dog there, and you're going to get him and tell him about it instead first. So you have the dog in a safe place, and then you go back to the old man. When you get to the old man, his son's there, and you talk to his son. Okay. And his son tells you that, well, you don't know it's his son at the time, but it, when you talk to this guy, right. you ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> when you talk to this guy and you ask, you know, where's the old man? Uh, his son then tells you that he died while you went to go do this quest. Oh. And then you try to tell the son that, you know, his that you went to go help him find his dog and that his dog had passed away and that he, he had something that you think may have been important to the old man, such as like a keepsake or something. And you give it to the son and the son literally tells you, this was my father's heart medication that he couldn't afford. His dog must have went to go help pick some of the leaves without him knowing, because he knew he needed it. My father died recently of a heart attack. If the dog would have been able to make it back with this, perhaps he could have lived. Oh, well, at least the two of them will now be at peace together. Oh, damn. And I was just sitting here like, oh, my God. What? <laughs> and because I was not expecting it, it came ridiculous. out of nowhere, and I was like, "This is fucking ridiculous!" And um, yeah, uh, I I just kind of took a step back after that, and I was like, "I'm gonna take a little bit of a break <laughs> for the day." <laughs> That's enough near for today, and yeah, it was. But like, it's things like that that, that do the world building, like I said, that make it very interesting. Even little mundane tasks have things like that happen. And I was like, that's really cool. I dig that. So I'm really enjoying near Replicant. Lots of numbers so far. That's good. And, and other than that, I really haven't done anything. I played a bit more No Man's Sky um, to work on their um, seasonal event. I don't know if I told you this, but they have seasonal events now like Diablo does. Okay. Yeah, so essentially you make a character and there's a list of things you have to do which gives you a clear-cut goal in No Man's Sky. Mm -hmm. And everyone else that's playing in the game with you has that same clear-cut goal. So much like a game like Dark Souls where people leave behind messages and things or people are at certain places like camping bosses or doing this, that, and the other... Um, when you're playing No Man's Sky in this mode, which is his own specific mode, which is what I've been streaming on Twitch with my friend, um, you and all those people like actually come together. And like when you land on those planets, all the other players in the game are also landing on that planet. So it feels like a massively open MMO universe where all of you guys are coming together to finish a global task as one and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So it feels really fucking cool to work together with other people and do so and just see other people doing the same task that you're doing and trying to like reach an end goal. Uh, but the end goal is basically something like you do this and you'll have this ship unlocked that's a permanent upgraded ship that's really cool and has these special booster colors and has the special sound, special look, and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. And you unlock that by doing these quests, similar to what would happen when you get like cosmetics for a Diablo seasonal for like Diablo 3. 
which, you know, is a thing that they've been doing for a very long time with that game. And they did that with No Man's Sky, and they called it Expeditions, and we've been playing that, and they've got really neat things, like, where I didn't even know how, like, farming in this game worked and everything, and then, like, my friend that had, like, tried to learn themselves from other people and watching them do it, he learned that and then he taught me how to do it and we were able to take that and put that into like my farming and where i wanted to farm and then we were able to learn more things so like you playing these expeditions is teaching people about parts of the game that they had never played before and they're going to continue to do this each like season so like you know a few months and then boom next exposition and there's and there's going to be different goals that will teach you different parts of the game that maybe some people found out or have created on their own and that's going to be rolled into the quest line that you do and it teaches you more about the game and more abstract things or smaller things that people don't normally do in the game and it kind of introduces you to different aspects that you may have not seen before and i thought this is super fucking cool this is way better than what they ever intended this game to be It's super awesome to just go fly onto a planet, talk with alien species, and then see like 30 ships from different players fly in overhead and land there next to you and be trying to do the exact same thing. Like you're actually in an MMO and it's so cool. It's so much fun. And I've been having a fucking blast playing it. That's good. I'm glad glad you're enjoying it more and more every time you talk about it. Yeah. um, Yeah. Well, it only took them a couple of years too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but no, um, it's one of those things where this is now that game that I wanted it to be and more, and all of this was given to everyone for free, and it's actually fucking insane that they're still adding more and more stuff to it with no mm-hmm. end in sight. Like, it is, like, I wanted a space game where I could interact with friends, and I could just be like, hey, I have a planet over there, I'm gonna go fucking fly to it, and, like, that is what this is. Okay. A lot of the things that was originally going to be rolled into things like um what's that giant scam of the space game that's never going to release oh star citizen yeah Yeah. a lot of those things that they wanted to do in that game they've already done in no man's sky they've also been doing in another game that i plan on trying out in the future um elite dangerous which yeah uh, yeah 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 that game also has a lot of the things that um star citizen planned on doing but never did because it's a giant scam okay all right so yeah um I'm excited to see what they do in the future for the next iteration of Expeditions. And like I said before, when this one ends, your character for your Expeditions will roll into a normal character. And any of the stuff you've unlocked and obtained can then be shared on your other characters and that sort of thing. So exactly like a Diablo 3 seasonal event. So I really enjoy this a lot. And so have a lot of my friends. We all like got together and played it on a stream and it was super fun. Mm-hmm. Very good. Most good. Definitely. Yeah, I know you guys are tired of hearing me talk about it, but if you want me to not talk about it anymore, you really need to tell them to stop making new stuff for it. Then they <laughs> gotcha. I'll get on that. <laughs> yeah, let's start a petition. Let's yeah. change the It's the game. opposite petition than what they had before. It was like, make the game better, and you guys will be like, stop, stop. making the game better. Stop. <laughs> All right, I'm done. That's it for me. I'm good. Gotcha. All right, you guys ready to move on to news? Sure. Not much, but all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually, this first bit of news, holy shit. What? Yeah, it was super random. Like, I just woke up to a tweet from Nintendo a couple days ago, and they're uh-huh. just like, hey, guys, uh, we updated Super Mario Party, and we made the multiplayer actually what you wanted online. So, yeah. here you go. <laughs> I, I saw that, and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> Looks so random. So it's, random. It's been like, what, two years? Two years later, they're like, hey, we added Mario Party to the online multiplayer. And it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we know you guys are having so much fun just playing random mini games, but we'll just uh, add this little board. We need random mini games. That was all they had. <laughs> it's so dumb. I played it when it first released uh, with my friend, and we were just like, this is it. So now, like, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I kind of want to message my friend and be like, yo, let's stream Mario Party. <laughs> yeah, that should be fun. I never bought Super Mario Party because I didn't hear anything good about it. So I was like, yeah. The game itself is fine. The mini games are okay. 
it's just if you wanted to play it anywhere that wasn't in the same room with someone, then there's nothing. Nothing. My only like real complaint about the game is it requires you to use a Joy-Con as a controller. Hmm. Not just not like the Joy Cons. It's like a single Joy Con. Yeah. It's yeah. Weird. Yeah. The, that was weird. I didn't get that. But I mean, like I said, I had a decent time with it. I actually don't know if I've ever actually played it multiplayer or not. Remember I yeah, bought I think it. we're gonna give it another go. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I didn't know you were still thinking out loud. I'm sorry. No, I was just making noises. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna move on to the next piece of news. Okay, move on to the next piece of news. Uh, Nick, did you I'm excited. The... I'm yeah. actually excited for this as well. You and me are gonna rock this shit. So the next season of Apex content is coming uh, next week, and it's adding a new character who has a direct connection to a Titanfall 2 character. Uh, Titanfall pilot, rather. So I'm super happy about that because I've been wanting more and more Titanfall stuff to come into this game, other than like the small references of like guns and like the world and whatnot. So now we're actually getting like direct character interaction. Um, but what I'm more excited about is the new uh, arena mode that they're adding to it, uh, which is basically, from what I can tell by the gameplay trailer, is a 3v3 that plays a la, like, a CSGO or, like, a Valorant, where you have, like, buy phases, uh, smaller maps to play on, and it's, like, a... There's four rounds apiece. If there's a tie, there's a tiebreaker round. Mm -hmm. But it's it's very much so in that CSGO vein of of how, you know, how the game is played, and it's just Team Deathmatch at the moment. Yep. Um, You can collect materials on the map to upgrade your gun so everybody pretty much starts out with the same kind of subset of guns you can buy the upgrades that you would normally pick up to to build your weapons uh also from the trailer brandon i don't know if you saw but it looks like your your main heroes like abilities also need to be purchased yeah i mean that's just like valorant Valorant yeah purchase your abilities um, except for your like special which that unlocks over time yeah again they're just doing valorant basically but with better characters and not as toxic of a community. Um, so I'm super excited for this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Valorant's got some real good characters. <laughs> no, like I'm just saying better. I, I, think, I think Apex has better characters. Mm. Um, and like I said, it's not a Riot game, so there's no shitty... There's not as shitty of a community. Actually, um, yeah, the last few nights I've been playing, we've had really good games. It's the other yeah. teams that have been, like, incredibly rude. They've been, like, rude to each other. We were yeah. playing competitive and the team we were playing against they're like well if our bottom fragger didn't pick a fragging character and then bottom frag then i wouldn't be afking and spawn and we're just sitting here like dude like you're talking to the enemy team and arguing with your team you're a fucking idiot (laughs) yes exactly so i don't play that game but yeah no i'm super excited for the legacy stuff that they're adding to the game we're getting a new balance patch too which is doing a bunch of different shit that came out uh, I also really like the bow and arrow that they're adding, the bucket bow, or the yeah, the yeah, bow check bow, whatever the fuck it's called. That I, was really cool. Yeah. Um. So I love that. Uh, there's an infested version of Olympus coming. Oh, okay. Which looks really cool. So all in all, I'm super excited for this content update. Yeah, it looks awesome. I'm yeah. I'm excited for this one. I actually installed the game, like I said, like two days ago now. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I've been playing it since then, off and nice. off. But I play at like fuck all in the morning, so yeah, you do play. Fuck all in the <laughs> so it takes a long time to get a game, but it is what yeah. it is. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. It's a lot of fun. The guns feel great, and I can't wait to shoot people. Shooting in this new the... mode. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, that looks really good. Um, but those are the only, that's the only news piece that I put down here today. I, that's so. all I could find. I don't know if you guys had anything else you wanted to talk about. Not really. I say not particularly. Okay. You guys ready to wrap up then? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening to us today. Wherever you find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon, Google, wherever you get your podcasts, we're there. And if you want to reach out to us, we're on Facebook, Twitter. You can send us email at gamecrunchcast at gmail.com. And Brandon. Yeah. Any final thoughts? I stream every Friday now. I don't know why I've decided this, but it happens. So um, you can watch me streaming at twitch.tv forward slash whatever, Kagato Asuka. I think that's it. Let me double check. Yeah, Kagato Asuka, all lowercases. And 
Um, from there, you can also go to twitch.tv forward slash the streaminators. Again, all lower ca- all lower cases, and see my friends who will be playing alongside me, their point of view. So, uh, we haven't got the dual streaming thing yet because we're not partnered. So, <laughs> in the future, maybe. But right now, we just stream on two different pages on Friday, and uh, yeah, we have both points of view for when we're playing. It's been a lot of fun. That's good. Yeah. Very fun. This is is the streaming is a two person streaming thing is that like a common thing? I don't know. I actually don't know. But um, when I used to stream back in 2015 to like 2017, um, I would always like do two person streams because um, the person I've always streamed with is like my best friend that I met on Xbox Live when I was like 12. So um, I, I've known them literally ever since then. So it's the same person you played with, uh, GP, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, I've known him for like 22 years. Oh, so. wow. Yeah, it's That's it's wild. fucking insane, actually. <laughs> um, so yeah, we I've always streamed with him. So we're both streaming at the same time and the same game always whenever we do so. So whenever we do Ooh. like weekly streams, that sort of thing. I don't think it's a normal thing, actually. I know a lot of recent VTuber people will, like, um, stream with, like, up to, like, six different people, but they're normally, like, having conversations. They're not, like, playing the game with those six people at the same time. So, yeah. Um, Yeah, Uh, I I don't know. I mean, maybe it's something that's unique, but I, I, I don't really keep up with anything to know. I'm a fucking boomer, so I don't fucking know about anything anymore, my dudes. Like, what's the internet? Yeah, what is this internet? <laughs> what's that Google's? Yeah, what are NFTs? Nobody knows what NFTs are. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, that's, you're not going to find a lot of people that know that one. I actually, I'll show you guys something after this. It's fucking great. I'll, I'll post it in the main chat later. <laughs> oh, good. I can't wait to see what you do to my Facebook ads this week, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Nick, any uh, final thoughts for you? Uh, no, I'm good. Right. Uh, that's it. My name is Mike Anastasia. You can find me online. I'm Clutch Penguin on Twitter, your favorite gaming console. And until next week, game on. Game on. Game. I gotta go find it in history. It was like an explanation of what NFTs are, and it was fucking. I found it this morning. I found one this morning. Was it the one with Mona Lisa? Yes, it was the Mona Lisa one. Yeah, it's great. I love it because it's actually like super accurate. Well, it was even more accurate because of the news story. Did you hear what happened? No. no. Someone literally took a picture and made an NFT of someone's famous art, and now they're being sued by the person because they never gave them permission to do it. So here, here's the the paragraph. Imagine if you went up to the Mona Lisa and you were like, "I'd like to own this," and someone nearby went, "Give me sixty five million dollars, and I'll burn down an unspecified amount of the Amazon rainforest in order to give you this receipt of purchase." So you paid them, and they went, "Here's your receipt. Thank you for your purchase." And went to an unmarked supply closet in the back of the museum and posted a handmade label inside it behind the brooms that said, "Mona Lisa currently owned by," and then the person's username. So if anyone wants to know who owns this, they have to find this specific closet in this specific hallway and look behind a cor- the correct broom. 
And you went, can I take the Mona Lisa home now? And they went, oh, God, no, are you stupid? You only bought the receipt that says you own it. You didn't actually buy the Mona Lisa itself. You can't take the real Mona Lisa, you idiot. You can take this, though, and gave you a replica print of the <laughs> in a cardboard tube that's sold in the gift shop. Also, the person selling you the receipt of purchase has at no point in time ever owned the Mona Lisa. <laughs> as NFTs. About right. it, it sounds about right. It's pretty realistic. Yeah, I don't understand it. It just it seems like people are just selling things yeah. to sell things. And then there's people who are dumb enough to buy them. Yeah. Yep. Um, that seems about right. So you know, we might as well start there. It's super topical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It was a movie about Mortal Kombat. What there did you, you guys go. think of this movie, honestly? Um, it was okay. It was good. I, thought it, was I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was a very good baseline of where to start. And I know they're working on four more of these motherfuckers. Oh, are they? <laughs> yeah. So, like, I really think it's a good starting point. I didn't, like, find anything inherently wrong with it. I, I quite often really enjoyed the way it was made. Yeah. You, like, inherently wrong in, like, what way? So, um, like, as far as a video game movie, or a movie based off of a video game. Mm-hmm. I didn't see really any faults with this as uh, when it comes to the actual uh, source material and the way it handled it. It seemed like the person that whoever made this movie actually cared about the source material in a way and wanted to, in at least some way, do it justice. And I, I dig that. I thought they did a good job that. with that. Uh, I do think it was because I didn't realize this until the end when I like looked mm-hmm. it up afterwards. But I do think it was a good choice to like kind of make your main character as someone who's not part of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that was weird. That that's why I said I didn't think anything was inherently wrong with it. the The weird thing was me and my friend that were watching it the whole time. We were like, "All right, so who is this guy going to be?" I like, thought he was going to be Scorpion. Fighter- is I we thought he was gonna be Scorpion too. We thought he was mm-hmm. gonna inherit mm-hmm. his his ancestors' powers and oh shit, uh spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably edit some of this stuff. Uh, don't worry. Yeah, but we, we thought he was gonna be Scorpion also. And we were just like, oh it's a it's a new guy at the end. We're like, oh cool. So so um so his power is armor? <laughs> um okay. Yeah. He, he I did read annoying. some like weird like thing about I guess the armor is is meant to look like the basket that his ancestor was placed in at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, I I did get that. But mm-hmm. like I don't know. It was Yeah, it was that odd. was weird. It was like a very weird power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's not really a power. That's just Well, I mean, hopefully somebody will kill him and take his, his marking. <laughs> then we don't have to worry about him anymore. Yeah, exactly. So Yep. All right, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Kano was the best character in the entire fucking movie. Yeah, no, he was. Easily? He was. Easily. He yeah. was fantastic. Yeah, no, they he did, the whole movie. They did my boy Reptile bad. <laughs> like, was that really Reptile, though? Y- yeah. yeah. Was just a, reptil- like, a reptilian person? Um, I mean, yeah, you, it could be that, but like, I really felt like they were trying to make it Reptile. I don't know. Not I agree with Brandon. I, I was, I actually, I kind of sat on the fence on both ways when I was watching it. Uh huh. I, I do like my what I came out with was what you were thinking, Brandon. Like I do think that was supposed to be reptile. Uh huh. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but like you said, if you know, you never know. Maybe they'll go back and you know. I mean, when it comes to Mortal Kombat as a series, because I actually really like the Mortal Kombat fighting series. I think it's probably one of the better stories in a fighting game, uh, period. And the actual characters are really entertaining, just in general. And um, when it comes to Mortal Kombat, they have so many different dimensions and universes and so many people come back from the dead that literally anyone from this movie that died if they're going to follow how mortal Kombat normally is will probably be back in the next film well they alluded to that at the end <laughs> yeah too they were kind of like you know death is just i don't remember what his exact quote was but it was just like death is just kind of like a doorway back or whatever mm-hmm. so i like some of the easter eggs there were some neat Easter eggs on this. Didn't any of you guys catch it? Uh, the only ones that I caught were the ones that were cheesy. Like, which ones? Like, when uh, Cabal got fucking wrecked, and he's like, uh, 
Fatality. Oh, no, 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 no. no. There were actual Easter eggs in the movie. Okay, those were just was little, stupid. No, those were just little callbacks, and it was just like, okay, it's cheesy, it's silly. I, the I, only I, one I that actually kind of like those. Just the only one that honest. fit, in my opinion, was the one uh-huh. where, where Kano said Kano wins. I was like, okay, that's... That I, liked, it. I liked all of them because I thought they were cheesy and stupid, and I thought yeah. that was what the entire movie was, and as such, I thought it was a good movie for what it was. And it feel, yeah. felt like the movie wasn't trying to be anything more than a cheesy action flick based off a video game that actually, you know, cared about the source material. And, and I dug it for that specific reason. I thought it was a really good movie. Not like a masterpiece or anything but like yeah i'd probably watch that again if someone wanted to watch it it was fun um but no what i was trying to talk about with um uh easter eggs was like when the jacks fight at the beginning with sub-zero was happening Mm -hmm. uh some of the graffiti in the background was actually button combos to do oh, okay. in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. It was actually awesome, and I was like, that's fucking cool. <laughs> and the only other thing that I saw that was kind of close to, but well, it was more of a herd thing, was they definitely, they pulled on the, like, old Mortal Kombat, like, movie theme quite a few times at different points in the movie, I noticed. Like, near the end. They would, like, hit up some of those notes from it, and I was like, mm-hmm. I know that. Yeah. I mean, that's just because that's the Mortal Kombat story. Like, it's, that goes back to them actually giving a damn about the source material, in my opinion. So, But that's yeah. the movie, like the original movie I'm talking about. Yeah, but like, the original movie at least got some things right, and then a lot of things wrong. Yes. <laughs> the first movie I thought was fun, though, too. Oh, no, 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 no. Those movies are are classics, in my opinion. They're 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 dumb, and they're really silly, but I love them for that reason. I don't find I don't think they're bad movies at all. I just think they're a product of their time. Yeah. But yeah. No. All in all, I really liked it. Um. I'm I'm excited for sequels. Same. I'm actually very excited for them. I. I guess like I was expecting some kind of after credits thing, and I was definitely expecting uh something to do with Johnny Cage in the film. Uh-huh. Which we got at the very, very end. But, like, I expected something in this movie. Because, like, Johnny Cage is, like, a big player in the Mortal Kombat lore and series in general. So to be like, yeah, we'll go, we'll go get him in the second movie. That was, well, like, really? Their reasoning from what I was reading was that since Kano commanded such a screen presence, that having both of those people on the screen at once would have been, like... It would have been taking away from one another's performance, right? Because you got Johnny Cage, who's a huge, kind of like douchey comic relief character, and mm-hmm. then you have Kano, who's the same thing, just in an Australian flavor. Yeah. So, like, that that's what they were saying, like, that it felt like it was difficult to have both of them on screen at the same time. But then you've got movies like, and I hate to use this example, but you've got things like the Avengers movies, where you have characters that are one upping each other with their just snarkiness towards one another and they're able to play off of each other really well and it actually like builds up both presences at the same yeah. time and as such i think that something like that would have actually been good i would have loved to see johnny cage interact with kano i, I think, think that would have been really so cool. with the avengers thing though is that they already have source material before that though yeah it's not that, like i mean they do too with the game I, I, well i can't think of any any Avengers character that's in the movie that is legit a carbon copy of one another, like Kano and Johnny Cage pretty much are in terms of their personalities. Well, yeah. yes and no, because see, Kano, whereas he's a fucking gruff dude that just thinks the world owes him everything because fuck it, uh, I, I'm a mercenary and I'm a big bad guy. When it comes down to it, Johnny Cage is kind of the opposite because mm. he's a snarky piece of shit who has a massive ego, but not because he thinks the world owes him everything. It's because the world did owe him everything and have already put him on such a high pedestal that it's inflated his ego to a massive amount. And they could have used that where it's like fucking Johnny Cage is what Kano wants to be. Really? And as such, like they would, they would, you know, butt heads back and forth because Kano's literally just a piece of shit. And Johnny Cage is a fucking Hollywood movie actor with all these special powers and all this 
the these ladies hanging off his shoulders and everything and kano's over here and he's practically a rapist and everything and and you know you got both those weighing where it's like we got a really bad side of what johnny cage could have been and then what johnny cage actually is and then like having those two characters clash i think would have been entertaining because they are opposites while still being the same character and there could have been a lot of interesting interactions okay who knows maybe mm-hmm. kano will be back you never know. Well, I mean, he could because, like, straight up, and like you said, fucking death is just the beginning, basically. <laughs> you know, exactly. But uh, my point with the Avengers thing, though, is like with the because all the Avengers had their own movies beforehand, so they had a chance to establish their personalities. And while Johnny Cage is established in the game, they haven't established his movie persona yet. So okay, that's that's fair. So like, give him the second movie, and then the third movie, they bring a bunch back to life from the past movies, and then boom, then that's when you have the like. I I think that would be cool. Something yeah, exactly. like that. That makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, they definitely have a lot of interesting threads that they could pull on for whatever they're doing next. So I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Oh, one of the one of the things that was really cheesy, Nick, that actually made me laugh was um when uh oh god what was that guy's name what was the main character's name he's oh yeah when cole is looking at all the like threads of everything linking the different uh greatest fighters in the world together on that big like board that um uh uh oh god why can't i think of her name either (laughs) sonia yeah that sonia blade has put uh up in her garage and whatnot Mm -hmm. um he just points to one of the pictures and he's like, they even spelled combat wrong. And I was just like, <laughs> all right, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I got a chuckle out of that one. That was good. Yeah, that was a fun movie. I liked it. Yeah, me too. It was fun. I don't remember if there's anything else I had to say about it. I know some people got some laughs about the whole leg sweeping thing too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Mm-hmm. It's just like a cheese move, and like they straight up made it into like a cheese move in the movie. Yeah, that was great actually. Um, me and my friend were watching it uh, over like we, we were syncing it together and watching it like Discord call and whatnot. And um, <laughs> when we were watching it, he's like, "Dude, I had a friend who used to only do that to me anytime we played Mortal Kombat, and then I would just <laughs> kick his ass when it got too annoying." Oh my god. Yeah, I, I had fun. It was good. It's definitely worth a watch, in my opinion. If Especially if you like the Mortal Kombat franchise. I mean, it's been around forever at this point. I yeah, did. Like, even with it being around forever, some people are just like, mm, Mortal Kombat. Mm, I don't really I, know. I, I wanted to bring something up. I did have somebody uh, in my at mentions on Twitter say, like, basically they were calling the movie murder porn. And I was confused because i was like have you played like the recent games where like if you punch somebody in the balls it zooms in and you can see everything just kind of exploding yeah and, like i don't know i know when mortal kombat originally came out that was like one of the original games that was like we need a rating system because this is violent um the mortal kombat I... movie wasn't even that violent it, wasn't, it no. really wasn't well that was my problem i was like if you played mortal kombat like 9 10 11 i'm like it's not that and so i asked him i was like well have you played those games he's like oh no i just watched the uh the cinematics, because I like the lore of the game. I'm like, all if right, well, you can shut up now. If you the cinematics, then you probably know how violent it can get also. This just sounds like someone being an asshole just to be an asshole. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's definitely like, you can't be that dumb. But you might be that dumb. I mean, I haven't played Mortal Kombat in a long time, but even I know it's like... The more recent ones are race. really good. Like, yeah. Legitimately really good. And I don't, I don't even know. This wasn't even that bad compared to, like this, the the gore that was in this was kind of like B movie gore, where like blood like sprays out like a sprinkler. Oh, yeah, 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 but like even though they did that, like it didn't look bad. Like I thought the CGI and like I think there was some practical effects in this. I thought the effects work actually looked really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean there definitely had to be some practical stuff there. Uh, but no, I mean I thought. I thought it was fun. I mean, it was definitely very Mortal Kombat ish, like what I would have expected. So, there's something that made me laugh too. I don't remember what it was. I made some jokes. I was talking over the movie when I was watching it last night. There was a point where I was like, I don't remember who it was. And I expected him to just be like, do like a friendship move <laughs> instead. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, that'd be funny as hell. Yeah. 
I think it was Kano. I don't remember, but it was funny. When before, yeah, it was, uh, I think that actually sounds right. Either that or uh, uh, Kung Lao. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh my god, why are names so hard to remember when it comes to Mortal Kombat? I always remember their moves and even their move sets, but never their Liu names. Kang. Liu Kang and Kung Lao. Yeah. That's the Kung, Kung Lao. Lao. Yeah, those two. Like I could not remember Kung Lao's name to save my life when the movie. Kung started. Lao's one of my favorite characters in Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat. Uh, him and his boomerang hat. <laughs> I'm about to say, I play him for the hat. I liked all the hat jokes that they made at his expense. <laughs> I loved it. It's like, some of us, we get, they get shitty powers, like boomerang hats. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you guys want to say about Mortal Kombat? No, I'm good. I guess the last thing I would say is I actually like the cast. Like the people that played each one of the characters, I thought they fit the character pretty well, and they at least played it correctly, in my opinion. Uh, that's really all I, I like. They, they think they did a good job with the casting because that was one of the jokes I made with my friend. I was like, well, uh, we can t- clearly tell that this these people didn't go to the Borderland school of casting your, your <laughs> characters because, like, we were watching it, and I was like, I haven't heard of any of these people, no, ever. But they're actually playing their character correctly, and they look like their character, and they act like their character. So, awesome. And I was like, if only Borderlands could have done this. No, they're they're spending money on big-name people. Yeah, 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 that's dumb. Actually, uh, interesting enough, um, Nick, um, have you seen I... Ichi the Killer? I don't remember. I don't no. Remember. Okay, so I really like that movie. And um, one of the people in Mortal Kombat was actually from Ichi the Killer. Um, and then also, uh, some of the people in Mortal Kombat were from the raid in the raid two. So right. they actually do have some pretty big name people, but they didn't like draw any attention to it, which is very surprising because mm-hmm. that, you know, normally you'd have movies be like, from the person that was in blah, blah, blah is playing this person and blah 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 or as blah and it's like they would always do that shit when they want to get people's attention and they would take a popular movie because like the raid and the raid 2 did fucking gangbusters when uh they first originally released so like they could have easily capitalized off that for your action fans Mm -hmm. audience but they didn't even try that and i didn't even realize it was them until yeah until like after the movie when i was like some of these people are familiar but like they didn't sell this like ah this familiar face you know from another thing so we like looked at the imdb and i was like huh some of these people i have actually seen before and they're really good mm-hmm. but they didn't capitalize on these people being in this movie they just let the movie speak for itself and i, I dug that as well as like an actual choice cuz it made everything feel very not hollywood mm-hmm. <laughs> like you know the borderlands film for instance where they're just grabbing all the big names and being like i don't give a shit if it makes sense this person's this it's like oh okay <laughs> all right then sub-zero guy was in a fast and furious movie yep he was that was about the only notable thing that i remembered a lot of them were from foreign films so yeah like, um like i said each of the killers is a very popular foreign film and as are the raid and the raid 2 and if you've never seen any of those three movies i would recommend watching the raid and the raid 2 and if you have a strong stomach i would recommend watching ichi the killer <laughs> and if you don't I have a strong stomach i would you have i think so like the one where like well this is one of the scenes where like anyone that tells me i've seen ichi the killer i tell them the scene and they're like oh yeah i remember that so they had this man being tortured in this room and they had his skin on like hooks and it was being pulled from every angle and then they would walk up behind him and pour boiling water on his back to try to make him talk does this sound familiar to you Mike? Sounds familiar i don't remember okay. that. yeah i'm 99 sure i've seen that movie it's a really good movie like it's legitimately good um it's really fucked up though so yeah watch each of the killer if you can <laughs> there's a, f- a 4k blu-ray came out of it um last year i watched it again it was a 4k director's cut blu-ray i watched it last year again yeah so yeah so i like you can even watch it in 4k if you want i guess what i'm getting at is there's a lot of really good movies go watch movies instead we barely play games anymore (laughs) (laughs) 
That's why it's games and things. Anyway, moving on. Anyway, um, who is him? What? Oh, uh, the guy who played Kung. No, Kung not Lao? Kung Lao. Liu Kang. Liu Kang. Yeah. Okay. Well, when I watched the movie, I was like, I'm surprised that they didn't have the hot guy from the Power Rangers movie in there. And that was him. I didn't even recognize him. <laughs> oh, that is that hot guy. Yeah. And he was in that Black Mirror episode, too. It was very good. That Black Mirror episode? And see, that's what I mean. Like The one where notice... it was the Black Mirror episode where they're in a fighting game. Like him and his friend oh, are in a VR fighting game. I have not seen that. That sounds fun. It was very... where... It's the guy Anthony Mackie, right? Huh? It's got Anthony Mackie in it. I don't know. The Falcon from No? Oh, it was like one of the characters? Yeah. I, I don't I don't know who that is, so I'm not sure. Okay. That's yeah. where the two dudes are playing the fighting game and they fuck each other, right? Yes, that's the yeah. one. Yeah, Anthony <laughs> Mackie. See <laughs> yeah. Nick knows. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, like, you just had the same like epiphany that I did after seeing the movie. You're like, wait a minute, that's that's that guy. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, you didn't notice it during the film because they actually played their character really well. They were playing a character, not just big name Hollywood person is playing a character. Please believe this person's like, this character. No, it was this person's this character. Also, if you go and check afterwards on their IMDb page, here's several movies you've seen them in that you didn't even remember, and you're like, what the fuck? Uh, I had that uh, mental thought that, you know, I was like, I'm surprised they didn't have him there. But they didn't have him, like, super over-sexualized like they do in the other movies either. Really? So, because usually, like, I mean, I don't, I'm pretty sure even in Power Rangers, he's, like, not wearing a shirt half the time. And he definitely I, I wouldn't be surprised. Hair. So... And he had long hair, he's wearing clothes, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, he had long hair and he's wearing clothes. That's how <laughs> we didn't notice who he was. <laughs> exactly. You don't know how much of a difference that makes for <laughs> <Brandon. laughs> uh, 